Good afternoon, students. Yesterday, we had come across some of the endocrine glands, their secretions, and the functions into the body. Today, we shall have few more endocrine glands into the body and then secretions and functions. The endocrine glands. Till yesterday, we had come across many of the endocrine glands. Among them, we have studied the hypothalamus, which is present into the brain, whose secretions are of two. Those are the releasing hormones and the inhibiting hormone. We have seen the releasing hormone, which is uh, stimulating the pituitary gland to release some of the hormones. And again, it is the inhibiting hormone, which is again making the pituitary gland to prevent some of the functions secreted by the hormones into the body. Hypothalamus, we know that it is master of master gland. Then we are coming across the pituitary gland. So many secretions we had seen. We had seen the growth hormone, GTA, young P, B, O, L, F. Growth hormone related with the growth, overall growth of the person, thyroid stimulating hormone, which is secreted uh, from the thyroid gland, adrenocorticotropic hormone, which is related with the adrenal gland, melanocyte stimulating hormone related with the melanin pigment which is secreted from the skin, the melanin pigment from the melanocytes, the prolactin. Here it is related with the development of the mammary glands and the production of the milk, mesopressin, which is also known to be as an antidiuretic hormone wherein it regulates the water balance into the body. We have come across this, the oxytocin, the birth hormone which is called to be as and this luteinizing hormone related with the testes and the ovaries follicle stimulating hormone related with the development of the ovarian follicle in this pituitary gland in details we have come across the growth hormones the growth hormone function overall growth of the body we had seen the conditions like the dwarfism which is due to the less secretion of the growth hormone and the other condition we have come across that is gigantism which is a condition of over secretion of the growth hormone into the children's prior to the puberty. When secretion is more then the condition is uh, it is called to be as gigantism. The next we had come across the pineal gland present into the midbrain. This pineal gland secretes the hormone that is called to be as melatonin, which is again helpful in the sleep awake cycle. Its function is help or regulates the sleep wake cycle. Then we have come across. Thyroid gland. This is the one which we had studied uh, yesterday. Thyroid gland, its location, we had seen that it is uh, located uh, near the trachea region and it is uh, secreting the hormone which is called to be as thyroxin. Okay, the hormone which is secreted by the thyroid gland is the thyroxin, and this thyroxin. It is having the chemical composition of amino acids plus the iodine. Iodine is helpful in synthesizing the thyroxine. If the supply of the iodine to the thyroid gland is insufficient, then the production of the 
thyroxine is imbalanced because of which we come across the conditions which is called to be as hypothyroidism hypothyroidism right so this hypothyroidism in different um, people we had come across like people they will be suffering from the simple goiter if insufficient supply of the iodine to the thyroxine it will be resulting into the enlargement of the thyroid gland the condition we call it to be as the simple goiter then the uh, symptoms we could see is a swollen neck right the next we had come across the maxedema condition where sudden over um, gain into the weight is seen sudden gain into the weight then we had seen that the uh, skin becomes thicker the metabolic rate also decreases and these were the some of the symptoms which were seen into the maxedema which is again a hypothyroidism type then we had come across the creatinism this condition especially seen into the children where the improper function of the thyroid gland right from the beginning of the birth is seen into the child because of which proper development of the body is not seen the physical and the mental development of the child becomes retarded and further defective teeth the bow legs loose skin so these are some of the symptoms that are seen into the children who are suffering from the creatinism the next we had come across the parathyroid gland which is also called to be as gland in gland because its region is into the it is located into the thyroid gland itself these are tiny pore in number which are located to the dorsal side back side of the thyroid in the thyroid gland itself this thyroid gland it is secreting the hormone which is called as parathormone Okay, the secretion secreted by the thyroid gland, uh, parathyroid gland is parathormone, and what is um, the function of this? We had seen that parathormone it is uh, helpful into the regulation of calcium and phosphorus level into the blood. Okay, so in uh, thyroid gland also we had come across the other one that is calcitonin. Okay, calcitonin is the other hormone which is secreted by the thyroid gland, and this also regulates the level of calcium into the calcium and phosphorus into the blood. So this also this parathormone also in, which is secreted by the parathyroid gland also regulates the calcium phosphate level into the blood. If its secretion is increased. if the secretion of the parathormone is increased what will happen it will be softening the bones by removing the calcium from the bones and if its secretion is decreased then what happens it results into painful muscle cramps painful muscle cramps then we had come across in the next endocrine gland that is the thymus gland thymus gland where it is located it is located into the below the neck above the chest region it secretes the hormone which is called as thymosin which helps in development of the immune system into the children and as the child attains the maturity this thymus gland gets converted to be as a patch further we have come across the next type of the endocrine gland that is adrenal gland these adrenal glands a pair of adrenal gland which is located on the upper side of the kidney one on one on each side of the on the upper part of the kidney here yeah. Angular shaped 
So these are the adrenal glands. Okay, this adrenal gland it is consisting of the regions which are called to be as the cortex, the outer part. This is the cortex and the inner part of the adrenal gland that is called to be as the medulla. So this adrenal gland is also called to be as the emergency gland. Adrenal gland is also called as emergency gland. Why? Because it is preparing the body to face the emergency situation. So adrenal gland, it secretes the hormone which is called to be as the adrenaline. Okay. The hormone which is secreted by the adrenal gland are called to be as adrenaline. You can remember the name of the secretion with the help of the gland itself. Adrenal, adrenaline. So adrenaline is the secretion secreted by the, uh, is the hormone which is secreted by the adrenal gland. So this is the one which is called to be as the emergency hormone. Emergency hormone or it is also called to be as fight or flight hormone. Fight or flight hormone. Why it is called to be as fight or flight hormone? Because there are some emergency situations wherein you need to fight with the situation or you have to run away from the situation. If, if a tiger is there onto the road and you are walking on the same roadside, at that time what happens? By seeing that tiger, you will not be standing to that place. You get frightened and start to run away from the place with a high speed. Why you are running from that? How, how is the uh, speed increased in your body? That is because of the more supply of the oxygen to the blood vessels which are making to release much more energy and your rate of uh, running increases. So that is, uh, that is why it is called to be as the fight or flight hormone. Even the other example, tomorrow is your examination, still you have to prepare. Okay, I am giving an example wherein you can understand the fight or flight situation here. When you are, you are suppose you are having an uh, examination tomorrow and still you, you need to prepare very well. Half and half preparation is done by you. You will be having a fear in your mind that tomorrow is my examination, still I have to prepare. But until and unless you are attending the examination, that fear, as a, the next day you are attending the examination in, into the exam center when you are sitting, at that time also you will be having some frightenedness, or the, that is the fear into your body that how I am going to write the exam, right? So because of which, when this stress condition is there into your body, at that time the heartbeat rate increases the breathing rate increases and, and here we can see that the oxygen supply at that time to the cells has to be more and that makes you need uh, to fight with that situation. That means you are facing the emergency situation. So the body is preparing you to prepare the emer emergency situations. So that is adrenal gland which is secreting the hormone adrenaline. The next, we had come across the pancreas. So pancreas, it is an endocrine gland. Here, this pancreas, we are secreting the hormones which are called to be as the insulin and glucagon. Okay, these are the hormones which are secreted by the pancreas. Into the pancreas, we come across the cells. In the pancreas, we come across the cells which are called to be as islets of glandulins. Langerhans. Okay, islets of langerhans, which are consisting of the cells which are called to be as the alpha cells and the beta cells. Okay, insulin is secreted by the beta cells of the pancreas. Here, this insulin, what does it do into the body? Let us see. So, 
the insulin what does it do into the body it regulates the sugar level into the blood regulates sugar level in the blood that means what here here whatever the food we consume that is consisting of the uh, simplest form at the end after after the complete digestion has taken place it is in the form of glucose isn't it so this glucose is nothing but the simplest form of the sugar now when this glucose level is increased into the blood at that time it decreases the level of sugar okay it decreases the sugar level in the blood okay but it, it regulates the sugar level in the blood that means what when sometimes it so happens that we are eating much more sugar, um, sweets that will be consisting of the sugar content and that increases definitely increases the sugar in the blood at that time it is the insulin which decreases the sugar level in the blood sugar level in the blood and it converts the glucose to be as glycogen excess of the glucose which is present into the blood that gets converted to be as the glycogen it's a poly, it's a again polysaccharide form where it is getting stored up into the liver and the muscles what is so this is the function performed by the insulin the next other hormone that is the glucagon what does this glucagon do it regulates it is just the opposite of the here it also regulates the sugar level in the blood the same function but opposite in what way it is helpful into the body this glucagon this is increasing the sugar level in the blood it increases the sugar level in the blood that means sometimes it so happens that our body requires the energy and that energy it is uh, on spot not uh, present into the body at that time it is the stored form of the glycogen okay energy which is in the stored form of the glycogen this gets converted to be as glucose with the help of this glucagon so the glycogen gets converted to be as glucose and includes and increases the sugar level in the blood so this is the function performed by the insulin and the glucagon the next we come across the last type of the endocrine gland that is the gonads what are gonads gonads these are the organs which produce the gametes okay these are the organs which produce the gametes here it is different into the males and into the females gonads what are gonads gonads are the organs which produce the gametes into the males those are called to be as into the males those are called to be as the testes and into the females it is called to be as the ovaries got it gonads are what gonads are the organs which produce the gametes and into the male those are the testes and into the females those are the ovaries now here the male gonad that is testes these testes those are present into the scrotum okay that is the location for the testes testes those are present into the scrotum and these testes they produce the hormone which is called to be as the testosterone okay the hormone which is produced or which is secreted by the testes are the testosterone what is the function of these hormone into the males this helps in the development of secondary sexual characters in males
okay testosterone this is the hormone secreted by the testes into the males that is helpful in the development of the secondary sexual characters in males so that is the function performed by the testosterone of the testes and into the females the female gonads the female gonads those are the ovaries the ovaries and these ovaries they produce the hormones which are called as or they secrete the hormones which are called as estrogen and the progesterone okay these are the hormones which are produced by the ovaries the estrogen that is helps or it helps in or it regulates the development of the feminine characteristic features and the progesterone it helps in the change in uterus during the menstrual cycle and the pregnancy so these are the functions that are performed by the estrogen and the progesterone which are secreted by the ovaries now here we come across the last part of the chapter which is called to be as feedback mechanism about these two the ovaries and the testes and their hormones we shall still learn in details into the coming up chapters that is how do organisms reproduce now we are taking up the last part of the chapter that is feedback mechanism what is this feedback mechanism it is the mechanism which controls the flow of hormones got it which controls the flow of hormones what do you mean by this controls the flow of hormones now the timing and the amount of the hormones it is controlled by this mechanism now how to understand this concept here we shall take up the example of the insulin okay we shall take up the example of the insulin here insulin what does it do as we know that it regulates the sugar level into the blood now if the uh, how do we know that the uh, sugar in the blood has increased the sugar level in the blood has increased it is the cells of the pancreas okay the cells of the pancreas they take up the information to the pancreas okay the cells of the pancreas the they take up the information that sugar level in the blood has increased because of which the insulin gets stimulated and secretes the hormone insulin when this secretion of insulin is there into the blood what happens the sugar level into the blood falls down okay it falls down when it falls down the retardation secretion of the insulin is seen and this information that the sugar level into the blood has fallen will be taken up by the cells of the pancreas and they reduce the secretion of the insulin that this is how the feedback mechanism is seen into the human beings here the positive feedback mechanism and the negative feedback mechanism we come across here when we are saying the positive feedback mechanism wherein here the production uh, if we consider the production of the milk from the mammary glands due to the suckling of the baby that is increased but the negative feedback mechanism if we speak of that comes to the insulin here because if this insulin whatever the insulin is secreted by the cell normally but that sugar level it is not getting controlled if it goes on increases if the sugar level into the blood is still increasing even though this insulin which is secreted that is not sufficient to retard the secretion uh, to uh, to fall the uh, sugar level into the blood at that time here we come across the diabetes we come across the diabetes here what happens when this sugar level into the blood is not controlled by the secretion of the insulin then the person may be suffering from the diabetes here we come across uh, a question that uh, some of the patients they take up insulin injection right 
insulin injection. So, um, why do the um, patients they take up the insulin injection? It is so that whatever the insulin is secreted by the body, by the pancreas, it is not sufficient for the controlling of the sugar level into the blood. But when the insulin injection has been taken up, it increases the amount of insulin into the body and makes the sugar level fall into the blood and gets controlled into the body. This is uh, the feedback mechanism. Listen once again, it can be asked what is feedback mechanism, what, uh, how is it, uh, give an example for the feedback mechanism. What is feedback mechanism? Feedback mechanism, it is the mechanism which controls the flow of hormones. That means the timing and the amount of secretion of the hormone, it is controlled by the feedback mechanism. Here, the insulin, if we take up the example of the insulin, how the process is seen of the feedback mechanism. Here, this, how, the, how can we know that the sugar level has increased into the blood? It is because of the cells which are present into the pancreas, it, an information has been taken that sugar level is increased into the blood. At that time, the pancreas secrete the hormone insulin. And when its secretion is more, the sugar level into the blood falls. When the sugar level falls, then a message again has taken by the cells to the pancreas that the insulin secretion should be retarded. In this way, the control of the sugar in the blood is seen. So this is a feedback mechanism. So in the entire chapter, what we have come across, it is related with the animals. When it is a control and coordination into the animals, we come across the two types of the systems. That is the nervous system and the endocrine system. Into the nervous system, when we have come across, what do you mean by the nerve? What are the functions of the nerves here? We had seen the function of the nerves that they are transmitting the impulses, they are uh, responsible for the voluntary and the involuntary movements. They are responsible for taking up the uh, stimulus to the brain or to the spinal cord. The next we had seen the different types of the neurons. That is, here we come across the sensory neurons, the motor neurons and the relay neurons. The sensory neurons which take up the stimulus impulses and the motor neurons, they are taking up the response impulses. Relay neurons, they are mixing up that is they are taking up the information from the um, sensory neurons and giving back the response impulse to the motor neurons next we had seen the structure of the neuron into the neuron which is the structural and functional unit of the nerves uh, nervous system this neuron is consisting of the um, structures the cell body the dendrites the exon nerve endings the myelin sheet so the difference between the exon and the uh, exon and the dendrites can be asked here exon it is a single elongated structure which arises from the cell body the other one that is uh, dendrites these are branched structures which are arising from the cell body dendrites they are taking up the impulses towards the cell body they are conducting the impulses towards the cell body and exon they are taking up the impulses away from the cell body so this can be written to be as the differences between the exon and the dendrites here again the exon it is covered up with the myelin sheet so that the transmission of the electrical impulses becomes fast and also it protects the exon the nerve endings when the electrical impulses from the dendrites the electrical impulses Say this is uh, the nerve endings. Okay, this is the myelin sheet. This one cells. Okay, now the electrical impulses which are taken up from the receptors, they are conducted to them, they are transmitted to them. Dendrites. From the dendrites, it is taken to the cell body. From the cell body, it has taken up by the exon and in the nerve endings, they are 
releasing some uh, till here the electrical impulses are carried here when they reach when the electrical impulses are reaching to the nerve endings here they are releasing some of the chemical substances which undergo the reaction and further conduct the electrical impulses to the next successive neurons the tiny gap between the two successive neurons is called to be as the synapse is the synapse after this the neuron we had seen the nervous system that is consisting of the central nervous system we had come it was the nervous system that is consisting of the central nervous system the peripheral nervous system and the autonomic nervous system central nervous system it is consisting of the brain and the spinal cord where the brain it is well protected inside the cranium it is consisting of the connective tissue layer which is called to be as the meninges which is made up of three layers the dura mater arachnoid and the pia mater the space between the arachnoid and the pia mater it is filled up with a fluid which is called to be as cerebrospinal fluid this fluid acts to be as what it acts to be as shock absorber Right. After this, we had come across uh, the brain. It is consisting of the three regions, which are called to be as the fore brain, the mid brain, and the hind brain. Right. So the brain is consisting of three regions: fore brain, mid brain, and the hind brain. In the fore brain, we had come across the regions which are called to be as the cerebra. Right. cerebrum it is the largest part of the brain which is consisting of the or which is separated by the groove and internally these grooves are connected up to one another by the nerve sheath which is called to be as corpus callosum the cerebrum it is consisting of the lobes which are called to be as the occipital lobe the temporal lobe then the parietal lobe and the frontal lobe so each one of them functioning differently occipital lobe those are related with the visual nerves auditory auditory nerves they are seen uh, they are connected up to the temporal lobes then uh, here the uh, frontal lobes those are related with the muscular activities and lastly the parietal lobe which are related with the touch that is related with the thermoreceptors so the cerebrum it is called to be as the seat of consciousness why because here it is a uh, the one which is uh, helpful into the analyzing which helps us to analyze think learn memorize and also consist uh, also helps in will power development of the will power because of which it is called to be as a seat of consciousness then we have to make rose into the uh, uh, four brain itself the next part which is called to be as the olfactory lobe this olfactory lobe is consisting of the olfactory nerves right which brings up the smell impulse to the brain after this we had seen the last part of the forebrain that is called to be as the diencephalon the diencephalon again here we come across the two parts that is the thalamus and the hypothalamus so thalamus what does it do thalamus it is the one which brings up the stimulus impulses from the sense organs to the cortex of the brain that was the function that is the function performed by the thalamus then we had come across the hypothalamus what does it do hypothalamus it regulates the appetite and sleep it regulates the water balance into the body it regulates the water um, body temperature and also controls the pituitary gland and the autonomic nervous system so those are the functions that are performed by the hypothalamus next coming to the mid brain the mid brain what does it do mid brain it is connecting the fore brain and the hind brain this mid brain it is 
related with the reflex movement which regulates the movements related with head neck and the trunk okay Tr uh, the, uh, the movement related with the head neck and trunk and the stimulus they are responding are to the auditory and the visual nerves auditory and the visual nerves lastly it is the hind brain hind brain what does it do it is consisting of the regions which are called as the cerebellum then comes the pons and the medulla oblongata so these are the regions found into the hind brain where the cerebellum controls the voluntary actions like the balancing of the body here the body posture and the all voluntary movements related with the body the next comes the pons it is related with the mastication process the uh, respiration is also controlled by the pons and the facial expressions it controls facial expressions the mastication and the respiration the next one the medulla oblongata medulla oblongata it is the last part of the hind brain and here it continues to be as the spinal cord this medulla oblongata is also called to be as the brain stem and this brings up the involuntary actions of the body the involuntary actions like the sneezing coughing blinking of the eyes vomiting heartbeat breathing so all these peristalsis movement of the esophagus so all those are controlled by the medulla oblongata next coming up to the second part of the central nervous system that is the spinal cord this spinal cord is also covered up with the meninges layer and spinal cord has a bony structure which is called to be as the vertebral column from the spinal cord 31 pairs of the nerves arise which are called to be as the spinal nerves the spinal cord it is the main site for the reflex action now this spinal cord as it is the main site for the reflex action as it is the main site for the reflex action what do you mean by reflex action reflex action is the sudden automatic response to the external stimulus that is the reflex action and this reflex action is performed by the reflex arc now what is this reflex arc reflex arc it is the pathway of the nerve impulse into which the reflex action is involved and this reflex arc is consisting of the components which are called to be as the receptors the sensory neurons then the association neurons which are present into the spinal cord then comes the motor neurons and lastly the effectors right receptors they are receiving the stimulus the sensory neurons they are taking up the stimulus to the so they are taking up the stimulus impulse to the association neuron and from the association neuron the um, response impulse is transmitted to the motor neurons motor neurons carry up the response impulse to the effectors and effectors show the visible response that may be in the form of the muscles or maybe in the form of glands so uh, here the components are important they may ask you to write the functions of any one of them the next after the reflex action we have come across the diagram also of the reflex arc if you remember the diagram the next after reflex action we shall be moving up to the peripheral nervous system pns 
the peripheral nervous system that is consisting of the nerves which are emerging from the brain that is it is consisting of 12 pairs of the cranial nerves and it is also consisting of 31 pairs of the spinal nerves these together they are branched out into the entire body and the form peripheral nervous system so 12 pairs of the cranial nerves they are related with the head and 31 pairs of the spinal nerves they are spread out into the entire body the next coming to the autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system it is a special set of the peripheral, uh, peripheral nervous system which is related with the visceral organs so here the autonomic nervous system it is consisting of sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system so sympathetic nervous system the example i had given for this is uh, related with the dilation of the pupil of the eye wherein when uh, we move uh, from the brighter area to the dark place at that time we are not able to see any of the objects it takes a bit of time to form the image into the eye and that is because and when we are entering to the dark room the pupil of the eye dilates so that the lens also increases and an image is also formed into the eye so that is an example by which we can understand the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system it is just the opposite of a sympathetic nervous system wherein here the constriction of the pupil of the eye is seen so it is just the opposite function performed by the uh, sympathetic where from the darker area when we are moving to the brighter place at that time the pupil comes back to its normal pos position and that we call it to be as constriction of the pupil of the eye after this we had come to the endocrine system the glands what are glands glands are the organs which are meant for secretion here um, we had seen the two different types of the glands that is exocrine glands and the endocrine glands exocrine glands and the endocrine glands exocrine glands are glands with duct so their uh, duct so here the secretion is uh, in the form of enzymes the secretions is in the form of enzymes and in case of the endocrine glands these are ductless glands these are ductless glands here what happens when they are secreting the secretion in the form of hormones they are directly secreting it into the blood stream so uh, the, uh, the endocrine glands they secrete the hormones they secrete the hormones and these hormones they are taken up to the target organs hormones which are secreted by the endocrine glands they are in very small uh, they are secreted in very small amounts and this hormones and these hormones they are taken up to the target organs now here they are the hormones are secreted somewhere else into the body and their effect is seen somewhere else into the body so here if we say the example of the pancreas they are secreting the insulin right and but their effects are seen into the liver so the liver becomes the target organ for the pancreas for the hormone insulin different types of the endocrine glands we have seen into the body those are the hypothalamus the pituitary gland then comes the pineal gland their uh, secretions and the functions we had come across the thymus gland thyroid gland parathyroid gland adrenal gland pancreas and the gonads at last we had seen the feedback mechanism what is feedback mechanism it is the mechanism that controls the flow of hormones and here we had seen the example of the insulin 
wherein the sugar level into the blood has increased will be detected by the cells of the pancreas and they stimulate the pancreas to secrete the hormone insulin. When this insulin is secreted at that time it retards or it falls the sugar level in the blood. Once the fall in the sugar level in the blood has been seen then the cells take the message to the pancreas to retard the secretion of the pancreas. Uh, retard the secretion of the insulin. This is how the feedback mechanism is functioning into the body. This is related with the human beings, control and coordination into the human beings. The next, let us see how the control and coordination takes place into the plants. control and coordination in plants. Now, into the plants, we had seen that the plants, their growth is the same because of the presence of the hormones. The growth and development into the plants is brought up because of the presence of the hormones. And the plant hormones, they are called to be as phytohormones. Those are the chemical substances which are present into the plant body naturally and they bring up the growth and development into the plant. Now, these plant hormones, we are calling them to be as growth regulators. The growth regulators are of again two forms. What are those? The growth promoters and growth inhibitors. Right? The growth regulators we had come across the growth promoters and the growth inhibitors. The growth promoters that bring up the functions which promote the growth of the plant body and growth inhibitors they bring up some of the functions which are which have to be stopped into the plant body. So the growth promoters we had come across the hormones like the auxin, the gibberellins, and the cytokinin. So these are the hormones which bring up the growth and development into the plant body. And in, in, in growth inhibitors, we had come across the abscisic acid and the ethylene. These are the hormones, some of the functions which are uh, stopped by these hormones into the plant body. Each one of the function of the hormones we had seen, like the auxins, they are uh, uh, produced at the shoot tip and these auxins are responsible for the cell division and cell elongation. The next we have come across the gibberlins. The gibberlins, they are the hormones which, get, uh, which increases the length of the stem and branches within the presence of the auxin. That means they bring up the cell division and cell elongation in the presence of the auxins. And the last growth promoter, here we have seen the cytokine. What do the cytokinins do? Cytokinins, they perform some of the functions like opening of the stomata, they bring up the cell division, rapid cell division is seen into the seeds and fruits. So those functions are performed by the cytokinin. These cytokinins, they also, here, the cytokinins, they also break off the dormancy of the seeds and buds. What do you mean by break off the dormancy? This we have already discussed into the previous classes. Next, here into the growth inhibitors, we have seen the abscisic acid wherein it is closing of the stomata, right? If the uh, cytokinin here, it is opening the stomata, but in case of abscisic acid, it is closing of the stomata, which is the most important function of the plant body. If the stomata are open, then here transpiration, continuous transpiration will be taking place and then it affects the rate of photosynthesis also. So, they, uh, it is an important function that is performed by the abscisic acid and also they help in reaching of the leaves. That means they are um, drying up of the leaves and making them to fall. And lastly, it is the ethylene which helps in the ripening of the fruits. This is another function that is, uh, this is the function that is performed by the ethylene. So, this was the recap of the chapter, control and coordination. Further, we shall see the 
discussion of the question answers what type of the questions can be answered on the uh, application based questions in this chapter we shall be discussing this into the next class